feel like Commander Kirk sitting up here. <laughs> Mr. Sulu. Warp speed, warp speed. <laughs> it's amazing how fast it is. <laughs> like my advanced steam tractor. Six yeah. miles an hour. Oh, wait, hey, 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 hey! <laughs> you know, it's like crazy. Because you need two guys to operate. Yeah. This, you only need one guy. Episode of Jay Leno's Garage. Just doing a little light reading here. This is called Red Four Wheel Drive Tractors. This is the kind of book you can put it down and not worry that your wife has picked it off and gone off reading it somewhere. It's going to be exactly where you left it. That's the nice thing about it. And uh, it was written by a gentleman who had been here before, Lee Clatcher. He was here oh, about 12 years ago with another book he had written. And uh, as I read this book, it had these giant tractors in it. Well, how big are these things? Well, take a look. Let's bring Lee and Mitch Kaiser in here. Come on in, you guys. My pleasure to meet you, Jake. Marketing manager for Steiger Tractors okay. for Case H. Yeah. Very cool, very cool, gentlemen. So, all right, I've got a couple of smaller tractors. Well, I got a big advanced steam tractor, but it's a hundred and something years older than this one. Uh, this is what, a quadra track? Is that what it's called? Quad track. Yeah. Okay. Quad track, okay. Yeah. Uh, is, does this come with wheels too, or is this an option you can get this here? Uh, or you can get either one. A uh, wheel tractor is specially made for wheels, and the quad track J is made specifically for tracks. So we design the tractor from ground up to fit the tracks. The tracks are not an add on system. You can't switch back and forth from tires or wheels because the traction and the torque is much more, is greater than any wheel tractor that you're putting the power through. Okay, now I don't imagine too many guys taking this to the Grange Hall dance on Saturday. <laughs> I mean, you could do that with the old track, yeah, you know, right. hey, pull up there, <laughs> you know. but, this, but I mean, this would be, this is gonna impress the ladies on the farm. Yeah, <laughs> for what, sure. is, it, is it for farm, see, I don't even know. This is bigger than most farms, this yeah. thing. Uh, is it used on what, large? Large, uh, high production acre farms, probably from 5,000 acres up, they'll have a quad track to do all the work. And the unique thing about it, it weighs about 26 tons, but you're only putting five PSI of ground pressure down on the soil. Really? So you reduce the compaction because it has four sets of wheels on it, 40 sets of wheels that put the pressure on the soil, and you only get like 1% slip. On an ag wheel tractor, a Steiger, you'll get five to 8% slip. So it's slip. only putting five pounds of pressure on the yes, ground. Yes, sir. So yeah. if this ran over me, It'd be like five pounds on my face. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know why I'm not buying it, but I, I, I understand the idea that it's so spread out because of the flatness of the track correct, that, correct. that it's only five. But it's not, it's not really five pounds. So it weighs, I thought you said 26,000 pounds, 26, 26 tons. It weighs 52,000 pounds. 26 tons. Yes, sir. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right, all right. Uh, automatic transmission, manual, what is it? Uh, it's a power shift automatic transmission. You can either put it in automatic mode or you can shift it manually up and down, but you do not have to clutch each time. And the beauty of this transmission is it takes very few parasitics, so we'll put more horsepower to the drawbar to pull the bigger loads through the field. Okay. The other thing that makes this tractor unique is for the environment, because we have them running in Alaska for oil field exploration, right. also Greenland, and then we run them in the Antarctic to go back and forth for geophysical survey work. And the nice thing is you can park it anywhere. That's, <laughs> <laughs> that's the beauty of it, really. Uh, yeah. Okay, yeah. so obviously, Case built, who built the engine on this? Uh, it's the engine's built by Fiat Powertrain, so okay. uh, we're a partnership under CNHI Industrial, and, okay. they, and they're our engine for So it's a little one liter Fiat four cylinder? Uh, a little no. bigger than the Fiat 500. Well, so how, what, how big a motor? It's a 12.9 liter engine, uh, four valves, and common rail fuel injection, okay. and it's like a four square engine, so the stroke is about as wide as up and down, so you get an even balance on the engine. V8 six cylinder what? Six cylinder okay. and a developed 2169 foot pounds of tart. 2100. Yes, sir. Wow. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So, wow. All sure. right. Well, that's, that's it's all about torque. That's what wins races. Right. Yeah. Right. And obviously it's diesel, as you said. Correct. Right. Correct. Okay. The nice thing is you really can't lose any parts to this because they're all huge. <laughs> Correct. It, I mean, we f I feel like I'm in some Gulliver's travel thing, you know, and <laughs> like we're little people climbing all over the place. We couldn't even get, it doesn't even fit inside. We couldn't even get <laughs> in the building because my door is only 12 feet tall, yeah. and this is like almost 13, uh, 13 yeah, feet. Yeah. Uh, okay, I, I didn't know how you got it here. I just showed up, <laughs> came to work, and it was parked here. 
Okay, and what is one of these sell for? I can't imagine. You're looking about uh, six hundred and twenty-five thousand dollars for a purchase one of these. So about the same as a McLaren. There yeah. you go. There yeah. you go. Yeah, that's yeah. pretty yeah. good. I mean, yeah. if you're yeah. buying your vehicles by the pound, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you're saving money here. You can't, you can't yeah. go wrong. Not that yeah. carbon fiber <laughs> crap on this thing. <laughs> right. That's right. right. Oh, bottom oh, man, this is made. Oh yeah. man. Yeah. Okay. You're looking at about seven hundred peak horsepower in the engine. Seven hundred. Well. That's what it is. Yeah. And max okay. out. Yeah. Uh, you can take it on the road, right? Yes, sir. It's road certified. And what, what's top speed with the uh, twenty-five track? mile an hour in this one? Even, with the track. even that's pretty good. Right, yeah, right. Mm -hmm. So your dollar per mile per hour is not so good. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> but the thing that interests me, you said you could do a thousand acres a day. Well, I mean, I couldn't drive at sixty miles an hour across a thousand acres in ten. How? How? how it's all about the width of the implement, so we'll pull anything from 60 feet wide up to 100 feet wide through oh, the Oh, of feet. course. So it, so it folds out like an old lock lawnmower. Right. It folds out this way. Right, yeah. And then whatever it is you're trying to right. do. Yeah. Okay. You pull the width of your building, basically, going yeah, through so, the field. So. Okay. Oh, all right. Yeah. I, I get that. Yeah. And your average speed in the field is what? Uh, eight anywhere to from ten? six, to, yeah, eight to ten is a good speed. Right yeah. now, implements are designed to go 10 mile an hour through the field. So you can put yeah. in your crop, plant your crop, harvest about eight to ten miles. So the real progress in farming is not the speed at which it goes through; it's really the width of how much you can do. The, the width and the horsepower all yeah. put together. So and then to what you're saying, it's big, but also to keep it transportable and roadable up and down the highway, so right. you can drive from field to field. Just like uh, this one is uh, one of fifty we built. It's a special edition, and it's going to be delivered to a customer in Turlock, California, when we're done with the show. Okay. Now, as you saw, my tractor is 112 years old, so I'm, I'm a little behind the eight ball here. When did they go to Quadra Track rather than, well, the big steel wheels with rubber on them or whatever else they use? When did, when did that when did that change over? That happened in the 1990s, Jay. Uh, they were looking at that time; tracks were becoming a big thing, and they needed to develop a track vehicle. And they had this group of engineers who had come from Steiger, and Steiger knew how to make things with almost no money. That company was founded in the 1950s by a couple of guys and their dad who needed a bigger tractor. They were having the same problem. They couldn't buy a big tractor, so they built one. So that company was built just from low resources, and they get investors and just get enough to keep going. So when the quad track came around, it was right after Steiger had become a part of Case IH, and those engineers needed to develop this track machine. But at that time, the farm economy was tough. Selling big equipment was tough. So they had almost no money. They had, the guys, what they remembered was having about $50,000. Right. So they realized that four tracks would be better than two. And they realized they could bolt it right up to their existing machine, not have to build a completely new machine. And IH is International Harvester? IH okay. is International Harvester. And they, in 1985, were bought by Tenneco merged with Case and Case IH. Okay. Case IH became a company, and Steiger, about a year later, uh, was in trouble, got bought again by Tenneco, and came into the Case IH family. There's not time. much chance of tipping this thing over, is there? None. No. 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 Almost, almost impossible. Yeah. No. Yeah. Because yeah. you always hear the tractor accidents. People just get lazy, and they fall asleep, and they fall into the wheel, or whatever it might be, you know, that yeah. kind of stuff. Does this have seat belts? Yes, sir. Yeah, so yeah, so yeah. seat belts as well? Yeah. Okay. Fully is that right. mandatory as well? Yes, it is. Yeah. In, in, in it's, a yeah. Tractor? yeah. We okay. meet all the DOT requirements to road, so the glass is tinted to the DOT uh, grade. Oh, okay. And the seat belts have to be there, the flashing lights, the road running lights are all part Can of it. Can you the, get through the toll booth? No. Uh, you have <laughs> yeah. to reach down a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, boy. They're, they're also extraordinarily smooth. Yeah. That was when they, those early yeah. prototypes, when they tested them, they couldn't believe how smooth it was. It was compared to wheels, it bounced over everything. Sure. It was just butter across the field. And one of the features we put in while we're standing here, Jay, if you look under the cab, yeah. it's got a full cab suspension. So when you're riding, there's three inches of travel on that cab separate from the tractor chassis. And what that does is we got four big coil springs and shock absorbers on each corner. Are they air, are they air shocks as well? Uh, hydraulic. Hydraulic, hydraulic okay. shock with tie rods and pan bars so you keep right. that ride smooth and you don't get a bouncing in the field so you can go that 10, 12 mile hour through the field without having any fatigue. And it must get tedious. I mean, there's no, I don't imagine there's a cruise control, not cruise control like a car, but I mean, we, you think 
you maybe fall asleep or, or something of like that. Is there any sort of protection like that of a guy, it just stops, you know what I'm saying? It'll basically drive, nearly drive itself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So there is protection, but there's also almost complete auto guidance. So the farmer go, honey, I'm gonna plow the field, put the tractor out there, go see the lady down the road. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's pretty close yeah. to that, Jay, pretty Ooh, close. Hey, yeah, yeah. hard day yeah, yeah. All right, yeah. well, pretty cool. Yeah. Okay, and you have what, is it a flexible drive shaft? It looks like you're pulling a trailer, but obviously you're not. Right. But is, is it a flexible drive shaft? Or was it, is it's a know? flexible uh, up and down, forward and aft, and right. also side to side. You get 26 degrees of oscillation from the front to the rear of the tractor. Right. So the tracks will stay on the surface all the time, so you'll never lose any traction. And what we have unique to a Steiger tractor is called tri-point oscillation. In tri-point oscillation, you think of the strongest geometric shape, right. circle, square, or triangle. Right. So it's a triangle. So in the steel chassis back here, we have a seven-foot bar that wells into the back of the tank and then connects down back underneath the bottom of the cab. So you have a perfect triangle. And then the dynamics will push the weight from the rear of the tractor down on the front tracks. So you got full traction all the time. You don't get any slippage. So the drivers on the front are pulling the same load as the tracks on a rear okay. So it's not four wheel drive, four unit drive for lack of a better word. Mm -hmm. okay. Is it four unit steering as well or you just steer with the front? Just steer with, uh, actually steers in the center of the tractor okay. so it's articulated. You have two cylinders, steering cylinders down below in the Steiger tractor okay. and it will articulate. That's what the steering. So, okay. so if I'm going down the road and I want to make a left turn, does this move first or does the front move first? Move equally at the same oh, time. Oh, move at the same time? Yes, sir. Okay, yep. okay. So. And obviously, all power assist, you can probably do it like that. Correct? Right, correct. Okay. Yep. Full well. power steering. Yep. And how many gallon tank? What, what, what's your gas tank hold? 470 gallons of diesel. Oh, no, enough to run you 18 hour day. Wow, okay. Yep, yep. Okay. Yeah. So you burn in how much fuel an hour? Depending on the load, you can burn anywhere from 26 to 31 gallon an hour. Wow. Okay. Yep. So you're using all the horsepower available. Okay. And I love the exhaust system. It, look, <laughs> it looks like something from Mr. Magoo or the Wizard of <laughs> It just looks like something. -na 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 -na. I, know that, I know there's something about it. I can't figure out why it, it makes me smile. But it, it, it must look like that for a purpose because the rest of it appears sort of style, whereas that looks yeah. totally utilitarian. Uh, what is happening in there? Is it, is it for emissions? Is it, is it reburning the fuel? What is it doing? Yeah, so it's completely emission certified, so yeah. we can run it here in California and meet all the emissions for tier four final. And what it does is it's a selective catalytic reduction canister. Right. So all the things to reduce the particulate filter, the particles and nitrous oxides are done in that filter. The engine is basically a tier two engine. Right. So it runs at full top dead center all the time. And you love this. It eliminates the cooled EGR valves. You don't recirculate the unburnt fuel oh, down I in see. the okay. crankcase. So, so you almost got cleaner air coming out the exhaust than you got coming in the air intake. So how does this filter? Is it I don't imagine it's paper. Is it like urethra or some fluid that it uses? It's actually got uh, metals in it that purify and have a, f a filter process in it with the SCR technology. So it'll take the diesel fuel, inject uh, urea, DEF fluid into the system with the fuel, and it'll oxidize and make a chemical reaction. And with that, it reduces the nitrous, oxide, si nitrous oxides yeah. going in, and also the particulate filter goes, okay. particles going out in the air. And you got a glass door, so you really can't be tractor and naked. That would be a good idea. <laughs> no, no. No. Some good old boys <laughs> 300 miles out in the farm somewhere. Yeah. It goes both ways. You can see in real well, Jay, but you can also see outside. When you get it and drive it, you'll see how good the visibility yeah, is. Yeah, well, yeah, it's actually quite clever, yeah. but it must raise the heat. Obviously, it's the air conditioning, so it must have to work overtime just to overcome the, the heat of all that uh, glass in there, yeah. I imagine. Yeah. Let me ask about these uh, globes here. The, those are obviously oil level, is that what that is? That's correct, Jay. So for all the 40 wheels we got on it and everything, they have their own oil reservoir. So you can walk by and check them and make sure the oil level is right. And just like automobiles today, the track tension is done automatically. So each time you pull a lever inside the cab, the track will hydraulically tension the 10,000 PSI to make sure it's on that. So just track. like a cam tensioner on, yes, a, on sir. an engine. Yes, okay. sir. Yes, sir. And I remember in the old days, you just have like two rods, one high, one low. You open the high one. If oil comes out the high one, right. you, you're full. You open the, if no oil comes out the bottom one, you're empty. Correct. But it always dripped it on the ground, didn't right. it? And you realize 
after 60, 70 years and all the vehicles, <laughs> it's a lot of oil on the ground. Right. So just every single drop counts now, doesn't right. it? Yeah, so. It does, and then it saves you downtime, maintenance time, so you got more work being productive. You don't have to be changing oil all the time, and it's easy to check. Right, and, and what's, what's your life of these? I imagine on the, on the road, there's probably not very much, is right. it? But it depends on the condition, so yeah. uh, they'll last anywhere from 3,000 to 5,000 hours of operation. Yeah. So if you're in a field all day in soil conditions, you'll get up to 5,000 hours out gotcha. of Gotcha. That was one of the things they developed uh, yeah. when they early started developing the, the tracks. The tracks would burn up in less than an hour, the very, very early ones before production. Right, right. So right. that was something that required a lot of rubber technology to make this work. And deeper tracks for different kinds of terrain, like the, some farmers want... Excellent you know, question. Yeah, there's different yeah. treads. And also, if you're pulling earth-moving scrapers or you're changing the landscape, you can get scraper tracks for heavy duty to pull these heavy earth movers around. Can we open the hood and see what it you looks like? You bet we can. I'll let you do it. I feel like you're four years old playing with your daddy's tractor here. Hey, Dennis. <laughs> hey, Pop, can I open the hood? Oh, go ahead, little Timmy. You know. <laughs> Let's see what we got here. Oh, man. Okay, that's a radiator. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and you run just normal... Antifreeze through the radiator. Right, yeah. okay. Yeah. No so special... It's an old antifreeze, so it's, again, environmentally friendly. Right. So if you do spill some or anything, it's protective to the environment. Gotcha, So gotcha. we meet all the emissions worldwide. So, and if you want to you wanna see the whole cooling package, we can take this front radiator down. You talk about serviceability and everything. So if you pull the clip over there on top, Jay, there's got one. got one here as well? Yep. Okay. Let's pull that out. Okay. And then this will all come down. Wow. Okay. So you got another radiator behind it. <laughs> <laughs> so you got uh, two full full cooling systems. We call an indirect cooling system, and we have two turbochargers on this tractor. So okay. we have a secondary uh, turbo package. So a two stage. One gives boost to the second turbo, and each one has a liquid intercooler and an after cooler and their own separate radiator. So, so this is like the McLaren P1 of the tractor <laughs> world. Yeah. And these are oil coolers, obviously. Correct. Yeah. Correct okay. for the transmission. Okay. Yep. And how many gallon system is this? Ooh, a gallon is about, uh, you're running about uh, 26 gallon of uh, coolant. And with you know, it's funny, coolant. I always thought sometimes the thicker the radiator, the, the, the hotter it runs because the air can't get through. Correct. But then the air comes through. But aren't you then just pushing hot air into this radiator? Yeah, uh, we got enough, uh, got enough heat reduction in this radiator, it'll take out that extra heat to get back to the coolers and everything. Okay. And we run a second uh, thermostat and a second fan off an electric drive. So we have an electric drive cooling system and then one driven off of the engine system. Now it seems like, I always on the impression, the thicker your core, almost the less cooling because the air can't get through. But once your hot air exits here, you're now pushing hot air into this radiator, aren't you? Correct. Correct, but we got enough uh, cooling capacity in this radiator, and then with two fan system, two cooling systems, we can take enough hot air out of this big radiator to still have cool air coming into okay. the secondary system because we use an electric drive fan in addition to the engine drive fan to cool up. Now this is not, this is part of this radiator, correct? Or this is a separate cooling? That's separate. Thing? So you have an oil cooler, and then you got a oh, secondary. Is this oil as well? Yes, sir. Oh, so these two are oil? Oh, this, this is the air conditioning. Air conditioning. That's air. Oh, this is your oil cool. This yep. is your air conditioning. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Very cool. And this just slides back right. up. Right. This will fold right back up. Okay. Gotcha. So again, it makes it easy to service, clean out. The screen size has been uh, made to make sure you got enough airflow into the radiators yeah. to keep everything cool. Well, I love how high tech it is. I mean, it's basically you know, got your yep. twin turbochargers yep. like yep. a like a P1 McLaren. Yeah, yeah. the whole bit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And uh, the cost, look at the size of that fan. Fan, as you well know, one thing about engines is you want to keep them as cool as possible right. and as force most cold air you can. So that's the reason for the two stage turbo, and you don't get any turbo lag. Right. And the other thing with the two stage cooling system, we actually get 40% more power boost and torque when we start to pull the yeah. engine down. And what's your operating temperature, about 160 or 180, or these run at 200, 210? Uh, they run about 200. Okay. Yep. Mm -hmm. okay. And what's your 0 to 25 time? That's what everybody wants to know. <laughs> 0 to 25. What are you well, I have to try that out today. Well, I haven't done 10 that seconds? test. seconds? No, uh, a minute. It's under a minute. Well, under, sure. under a minute? Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. Yeah. That's yeah. good. All right. Very cool. Very cool. Let's uh, okay, bring this just, back down. Yeah. And I imagine you can't put this up on a lift, so all servicing is pretty much done Correct. on the ground, right? Ground, I mean, yep. 
Good point. It's all ground level and service, just like you're walking around, you can touch everything, get to it, and then to meet European homologation issues and be able to drive on the road, you can see on this big tractor you can actually stand here and touch the top of the hood. So the visibility from the driver, you got a low point of entry here so you can see anything in front of you, whatever object you're coming up to. Yeah, I never thought of that because I know when you're designing cars now, you know, in Europe, the headlights have to be this big. In America, they have this big. So if you split the different, whatever, it's, yep. it's the same thing with tractors too. Isn't Correct. It? You've got, yeah, Correct. Yeah. yeah. That's why the headlights are here, and we call the belt line because yeah. this will be a worldwide uh, specification. So we got the lights at the right angle for whether you're yeah. roading or when you're in the field. And right here, well, California has a lot of dust, yeah. and these lights will cut through the dust better at being lower on the tractor. And that's your belt line. I don't want to meet that guy in an alley. <laughs> 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 It's a big, uh, well, see, I, I never, even, I never even thought of it. I thought a tractor is a tractor, and you just sort of send it out. You know. <laughs> uh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So do all tractors have to meet road uh, conditions as well, even if it's a guy says it's never even going to be on the road, but it's still it's got to be road legal. Yeah. 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 Well, okay. And almost all of them have to be transported yeah. to a field, so right. you yeah. can you got. How do you even transport this? I guess just a big... You yeah. get a big uh, haul truck, so you get a yeah, triple okay. axle truck. And yeah, okay. Down, right. down can the we, can we fire this up and take it around the block? Absolutely. Let's Absolutely. do it. Okay. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> hello, 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 hello. Hi, hi, hi. Thank you, you, you. Do some plowing. All right, let's do it. Telematics coming in. Is there a horn? Yep, yeah, right here. Oh. Yeah. Just push in. Push right in. There. Right there? That's it? <laughs> That's it. <laughs> oh, we need your lights. I'm sorry. I love this thing. <laughs> well, it's fun to drive. You'll have to use a Boston Logan Airport with a 20-foot blade on pushing snow in the winter time. You just push the uh, rabbit button and you'll go faster. Well, they got out. Yeah. How many speed is it? The 16 forward. Yeah. Wow, 16. Yeah. That'll give me even more. Yeah. Oh yeah, you can go. You you're only halfway up the speed chart right now, so you got plenty of room to go, Jay. Now, do you have to downshift because of weight uh, or load, or will it pull it just about any gear? It'll pull it in any gear empty, oh. yeah. As long as you got the throttle up, it'll take off. And, yeah. and what it happens, it shifts back down to four when you come to a stop. So. And how does braking work? Because obviously, yeah. there's no shoes or drums or discs or anything like uh, that. We have hydraulic disc brakes inside oh. the axles on oh, the okay. front and the back axles. You mean inboard? Inboard. Oh, yep, just, yep. Like, all right, just, right. Like a, yep. just like just like one of the uh, XKE. Right, right. So they're all hydraulically engaged and disengaged and. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> Atta boys! Yeah, you can shift up another speed. You want Wow! <laughs> it takes off. <laughs> it goes pretty good. Yeah. Now run her up. Go ahead. <laughs> Go again. You got another one. You got 16 of these. Yeah, right? and you got one more. Shit again. You got a, you got an overdrive in wow. it too. Yeah. Then you. Yeah! <laughs> Look at that little tiny that motorhome look. <laughs> Yeah, you're driving one of the easiest driving tractors in the industry. Oh yeah, for that's great. So, so you can see you got good visibility all around. You got it's, great visibility. Yeah. So and the, they use these as snow plows too. Huh? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah. Now you can't do you plow with outriggers as well, or no? Uh, yeah, you can get uh, uh, actually a sliding blade that slides in and out, and then you can have a folding blade as well. Yeah. 
And if you go up in California where the big dairies are, yeah. they pack silage with these, yeah. so they'll push the green shop all the way Has up. Has anybody to... ever gotten stuck in one of these? Like oh, yeah, yeah. Or, oh yeah, yeah, you can't get stuck. Yeah, if you're in real wet conditions, you will actually be like a SUV, right. you'll high center. You'll keep everything yeah. going, but you'll I'm actually... I'm pull a U-turn. We kind of made the seat you're sitting in like a bucket seat in a yeah. car yeah. so it supports your rib cage and everything when you're going through the field. I feel like Commander Kirk sitting up here. <laughs> Mr. Sulu! Warp speed, warp speed. <laughs> It's amazing. You think it had tires on it. You wouldn't yeah. know it was trash. Smooth. It had given plenty of tanks, and that you know it's a trash. Yeah. That's one neat, unique thing about the quad track, Jay. Yeah. Each track goes up 10 degrees and down 10 degrees. Maybe. So you got 20 degrees of movement on each right. corner. And that's what allows you to ride smoother, plus a suspended cab. It's hilarious. It's almost a pleasure to go run one of these all day because it's so easy to drive. Yeah, yeah. So filling that gas tank cost you about what? Uh, Fifteen hundred bucks. Yeah, three dollars a gallon diesel probably. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Imagine this with no hydraulics. It'd be crazy. Oh yeah, great for sure. And we got these actually running autonomously now too. Yeah. So we're working on a project up in uh, San Joaquin Valley. We're running these autonomously. And they're easy to maneuver and easy to use, so they make a perfect autonomous vehicle. Am I okay to turn? You're okay. Yep. Just watch this silver Equinox park here. I'll take that baby out. <laughs> it's in the gun sights. <laughs> Suppose you built Chevy tough. Let's see how tough it is. <laughs> You know, we got to do a movie with a car chase with one of these. It'd be fantastic. <laughs> like two guys racing. Like I'm almost running over there. <laughs> See if they get scared or not. Huh? <laughs> you do feel like you're in a spacecraft. You're so high up here. <laughs> it's amazing how fast it is. <laughs> Can't, how quick can't believe the power yeah. that comes up that fast. Yeah. Like my advanced steam tractor, six yeah. miles an hour. Oh, hey, 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 hey! Yeah. You know, it's like crazy because you need two guys to operate. Yeah, yeah. This you only need one guy. Once you get the feel out at steers, you can see how easy it is to yeah. steer. Yeah. And then we got a system set up where we call it auto guidance. You mark out your field. It'll do it, huh? It'll turn on its own when it gets to the end of the field. You don't have to touch it. like a horse that smells the barn. Hey, hey, yeah. who wants to go back? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Remind me about a story about my mother. <laughs> now, is there any talk about someday doing this kind of stuff with electric, or is that just not practical? I think, uh, the number of hours? We actually got uh, test vehicles we're running all the time on electric and we're also trying hydrogen, see which one balances yeah. out. But uh, see electric drives will be something that's coming in on the smaller tractors. We're there on some of the test projects. Uh, and we're trying just what you're talking about, like this transmission, we redesigned it and it took like five to 20 horsepower parasitics out of it so you would get right. more horsepower to the back of the tractor by changing the way the gears are lubricated and also the parasitic loss of the power shift. Uh, okay, I'm gonna turn. Okay. Clear back here. Okay. Actually turning radius is amazingly it small. It is. It's one of the shortest turning tractors <laughs> in the business. <laughs> And just number two diesel is fine, right? Yep. And there's a winter blend if you're going to run yeah, in the yeah. winter. And then on Antarctica and Greenland and some places in Alaska, we can run JP4 jet, oh, right? jet yeah. fuel. Yeah. And no change to the motor? No change. No, we just get rid of the canister here and everything and we go back to a tier two. JP4 or JP8? Yeah, aviation fuel. Yeah. So, yeah.
Uh, do they have like music and they have radios and things? Yeah, we got a radio oh, up, there. up there. Yeah. 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 Got the speakers are buried around you inside yeah, yeah. The, the panel. Because imagine if you're flying on a thousand acres, it gets yeah. a little tedious. Yes, yeah. The other thing we have, you plug in your iPhone or your right. iPad, you can plug right in and hear the sound through the speaker. Yeah, so when the company puts you on hold, you're <laughs> online, you know, you got, we got, yeah, you got eight acres to plow. Right. Your call is very important to us. That's why we put you on hold. So this is going to a customer here in Turlock? Yep, yes. Yeah. This is the last one of 50 special editions we built with the Black Hood, Jay. So it was, we celebrated 20 years of quad oh, track. Right, right. Right. How long does it take to build one of these? I imagine it's not like... A, uh, on a day, we could probably build in seven days, get yeah. all the parts in and everything. Yeah. Depending on the schedule and the workload in our plant in Fargo where we build them, we build all our industrial wheel loaders too. Right. So we'll take a 13 ton frame, put it in a robotic welder, spin it around, wow. and a human never touches it to weld all the frame. 13 ton frame? Yes, yeah, it spins it around. Right. It's like you got a baton in your hand. It right. just, it's amazing. Yeah, get a lot more of your money than supercars. Yeah, oh yeah. And it's all about uh, being efficient too. Yeah. So even though we got the most horsepower, there's like a third party test in Nebraska to test all tractors. We not only put the most horsepower to the ground, got the highest horsepower, we use the least amount of fuel of any big tractor in the yeah. business. And that's part of our uh, design. And cops can't stop you unless you want to stop. Right. <laughs> and we put the second door in the cab so you can put all your electronics in, you can clean out That's the cable. Well. Yeah, yeah. yeah, so a lot of customers want to keep their equipment real nice and fresh, so it makes it easier to maintain the inside of the cab. Do you make a bigger cab, like with two seats in the back, if somebody wanted to? Uh, no, we haven't done that yet. We haven't had that request. We had requests for bigger cabs, but not necessarily yeah. to put two seats in the back. Yeah. What would they do with a bigger cab? Uh, they'd probably get more seats swivel up here to my side and have more room for the training seat over here, so you'd have a little more to look because your seat over there, it will swivel 40 degrees to the right, so yeah. you can swivel that seat all the way around. And when you're using auto guidance, and you don't have to watch the mark you're going through in the field, yeah. it'll lay a straight line, and you'll be looking back at the equipment they're pulling, because they want to see what's Yeah, let me ask you how that works. Now, an autonomous car like a Tesla, it's yep. reading the lines in the road. Correct. And it's reacting to them. Yep. But in a field, what is it reading? It's reading a GPS signal off the satellites, okay. and you'll sit your mark, and then we'll use infrared cameras and everything to see any objects. So you would draw, like, let's say you drew a circle, it would then go in a circle. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Now, what happens if it's getting this in a tree up ahead? Does it sense that? And yes. Stop or yeah, go that is okay. that a, it's kind of like the military infrared cameras that'll pick right. up heat sensing. Oh yeah. You're only ten foot wide. You're good. Yeah. Yeah. Plenty of room on my side. Well, that was great fun. Thank, Thank you, you very Jay. much. Yeah, that I, was a real treat. I, I really enjoyed, enjoyed that. that. I did One too. of the more unusual things we've done here on this show. Uh, now don't go complaining it's not a supercar because we like to cover as many different kind of things as we can. And uh, you know, if, if you're into tractors, this is the Lamborghini, the F1, the Ferrari, whatever you want to call it, right? Dual two turbos, dual turbos yeah. right? 700 Big horsepower. Big displacement, yeah. 700 horsepower. Yeah. It sounds like a supercar until you get to the word tractor. So. <laughs> thanks a lot. Thank you, and Jay. thanks, Pleasure. Lee. Thanks for doing the book. We appreciate <laughs> it. Uh, hope you enjoyed this little bit of uh, American agricultural history. We'll see you guys next week. Mm-hmm. <laughs>